Hey guys, welcome back to the Wall Street Bull. Anthony here. I hope you're all doing well and staying positive out there. Guys, it's never a dull moment in crypto, that is for sure. There's something happening literally every single hour at this point. Uh, we have updates in relation to the Ripple versus SEC lawsuit. There is an important date, November 30th, which I'm going to go through. Some interesting stuff with that. Obviously, some updates in relation to Kevin O'Leary and uh, BitBoy. Full-blown having a crypto war right now on Twitter. It's full-on. Obviously, some updates in relation to Sam Bankman-Free. We have the Ethereum network now uh, doing some more upgrades, which is interesting. There's a whole heap of stuff to go through, so make sure you stick around to the end of the video. Let's get straight into it, ladies and gentlemen. Massive shout-out and thank you to every single one of you who have subscribed to the channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. If you are new to the channel, make sure you smash the subscribe button down there and turn on that little bell notification as well because as you can see right here, I love documenting my journey with investing with cryptos, dividend stocks, growth stocks, talking about passive income, building financial freedom, and yes, my goal at the end of the day is to build generational wealth. So come along this incredible journey. Things are just getting crazy in this space also if you can give this video a thumbs up watch it straight through it would really help me push this channel out to a lot more people because the youtube algorithm is absolute magic when you find ladies and gentlemen do that all right so give it a good old thumbs up it doesn't cost you anything it's down there absolutely free thank you very much you guys absolutely rock also little disclaimer i am not a financial advisor please do your own research and due diligence with this stuff I do not want to see anyone get financially hurt. That is why my number one golden rule is I only invest what I can afford to lose. And yes, we don't like to lose. You can lose money like that in the blink of an eye in crypto, as we've all seen over the past week. All right. So please be careful out there. Do your own research and due diligence. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the formalities are out of the way. Let's go straight to the community tab. And also, I just forgot to mention, get your cryptos off exchanges. Invest in a cold wallet. I don't care what it is, as long as it's safe and secure and you're confident with using it could be a ledger, a trezor, an Alipol, a trust wallet if you can't afford any of those, I mean, which is free and it's safe. Uh, obviously, if your device is kept offline and with a VPN, if you can afford that. But uh, guys, get your cryptos off, right? Because it's pretty crazy at the moment. Now, uh, these were the altcoins up in my portfolio this morning. We had Telcoin, Solana, we had VRA, which is incredible. I actually love VRA, Veracity, Ubix Network, and The Graph. All right, so those were the altcoins up. Now, let's go to CoinSpot. This is where I buy my cryptos in Australia. There is a referral link below. Please feel free to use that. You will get $10 in Bitcoin. Of course, with this stuff, do your own research and due diligence. Now, all the prices you see here are in Australian dollars. Everything else is set to USD, all right? So I'm catering for everybody around the world. And again, I will reiterate that I've only kept the coins that I'm staking on CoinSpot on here. And I'm fully prepared to lose those in the event that the apocalypse comes. Um, so just bear that in mind as well. So most of my coins, if not all of them, are in cold storage. Alipore, I love it. And I'm not promoted to say that. I actually like the uh, the actual cold storage wallet. I think it's, you know, I love the big screen as well. It's really nice. Now, let's have a look at the prices quickly, guys. Bitcoin sitting at $25,000 today. You've got Ethereum at $1,800, which is nice. I'm still down on my $1,000 investment. We have XRP, $0.57. Cents. Some pretty crazy stuff about XRP and Ripple coming out, guys. I'm going to go Cardano is at $0.48 cents today. We have Solana up 8.3135%. $21. I've still bought into it because I've been wanting to buy it for a long time. I do own Link now, $10.21, up 1.81% today, which is nice. XLM is at $0.13 cents as well. We have Algorand at $0.37, cents, which is nice. Some interesting stuff about Near Protocol. I actually didn't know about this. So I'm going to get through it in a second, uh, actually on Twitter. So interesting stuff. We'll go through that. $2.59. You've got VeChain at $0.02. Cents. Quant is at $174. Remaining quite strong at that level. Again, I don't know. I don't know whether I should put in some more gorillas. I don't know which is a thousand dollars. I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. Hadera's at seven cents. Moving down, ladies and gentlemen, my other favorite is Axie Infinity at ten dollars. I am staking that on Coin Spot. Iota's at thirty three cents. Moving down, some other favorites of mine. Of course, we have Casper up six point three seven percent, which is nice. Four cents, and we have XDC sitting at three cents, an undervalued gem. Now. Let's go to Crypto Bubbles. And before I do that, guys, I've got the Wall Street Bull Patreon linked below. I put up all my buys, my sells, my trades, what I'm doing with my investments, my dividend stocks. I talk business. And at the moment, I'm doing some pretty crazy stuff. 
which I won't disclose on this channel because I, I just want to keep it exclusive, but uh, you'll have to join up, all right? And uh, those of you in the community are seeing what I'm doing and it's pretty wild and, and it's crazy. But anyway, you will not regret it. Linked below, it's for serious investors, all right? So I'm building a very bullish community of serious investors so we can all talk to each other as well as on YouTube, of course. I will never get, uh, forget my YouTube audience because you guys are very important. Now, let's go to Crypto Bubbles. Now, I'm going to refresh this. Okay, just did on the day. Pretty crazy and volatile at the moment, as you know, everyone knows there's a lot happening, but Solana's up 10% as well, which is nice. Um, again, up 1.9% on the week. And I just want to point out as well that $231 Solana, $14 for me was you know too good to be true. But again, it's risky because there's a lot happening this with tied with FTX as well. So we'll see what happens. I don't know where this is going to go we never no one knows where crypto is going to go at the moment but uh the solid investments in my opinion are the banking coins but i did throw some money in solana because i wanted to buy it now bnb is up 9.4 percent um again 628 dollars trading at 298 that's pretty crazy to see where that was up 9.4 percent you know pretty full on of course casper i'm very bullish on this it is part of the banking coins 7.3 percent 8.7 percent on the week 22 cents was its high and it's currently trading at three cents beautiful time to dollar cost average in my opinion what else we got here guys Huobi token again up 9.9 percent .9 on the day i'm not really interested in that because again these exchange tokens I'm, i don't know man like ftt and all that and uh trust wallet and um what was the other one there was another one here, guys. I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, moving on. Uh, let's go to the news because there's a lot happening out there, guys. So check this out, all right? So the XRP lawsuit, good chance the SEC will settle with Ripple to avoid exposing Hinman documents, says legal experts. So the end of Ripple Labs' legal battle with the US SEC, Gensler's goon squad, might be in sight. And uh, the light at the end of the tunnel is a veritable trove of emails and other correspondence written by former SEC Corporate Finance Division Director William Hinman. That is a tongue twister. A well-known attorney and a crypto enthusiast argued... Uh, the SEC could soon reach a settlement with Ripple in a bitter XRP securities lawsuit. According to the lawyer Bill Morgan, the William Hinman emails being in the hands of Ripple gives the US-based crypto payments firm real leverage, which ain't going to happen. They're not going to hand that over to Ripple, all these internal documents, man. They do not want that to happen. This is outside probably of the, uh, the emails as well, by the way. But the SEC will strive to keep these materials under wraps which will not be possible if the case goes to trial. As such, the commission might be inclined to settle in order to keep them from the public eye because they're corrupt as F-U-C-K. Anyway, the documents in question concern former SEC official William Hinman, who gave a market-moving speech back in 2018, declaring that Ethereum was not a security because, like Bitcoin, it was sufficiently decentralized. I beg to differ about that. Uh, anyway, so while some may argue that Ripple SNSEC settlement has always been a possibility, Morgan argued that not merely theoretical, as the conditions for a settlement deal are actually quite good. When asked the uh, probability that Ripple's reply to the SEC briefs and summary judgment motions contains Hinman's emails and exhibits, the lawyer explained that this reply could be one of the most telling documents in the case. So SEC is likely to lose bombshell lawsuit which is, I hope they do. But uh, anyway, let's move on. So the SEC filed a lawsuit against Ripple in December 2020, and Gary Gensler took charge at the securities agency. In the scorching complaint, the SEC claimed that Ripple sales of, XR, of its XRP cryptocurrency represented an unregistered investment contract and securities offering. So again, <laughs> if this settles, guys, honestly, it will be, it'll be a, you know, a step forward, finally. But you know, we'll see what happens. But this is interesting as well. And November 30 is a crucial date and why a settlement is possible. But have a look at this. So by November 30, both Ripple and the SEC have to file their summary judgment briefs, which will remain under seal, zip it, uh, for the time being. On December 2nd, the two parties will meet jointly to discuss the redactions for the court filings. So which is interesting. A few days later on December 5th, Ripple and the SEC's briefs will be made public. Finally, on December 22nd, the om ominous right here motions to seal all documents related to the summary judgment motions will be filed. So according to the renowned Australian lawyer, nice, 
uh, Bill Morgan again, November 30, could be an important date that sets the course for the outcome of the lawsuit. According to Morgan, the documents that will be made public on December 5th could be one of the most revealing documents in the trial. The Ripple reply may be one of the most telling documents filed in a case to date and certainly one of the top few I have been eagerly awaited, which is interesting. So Morgan believes, based on his experience as a mediator, uh, the settlement agreement between the SEC and Ripple is a real possibility. Further, he noted that the settlement agreement could be reached at any time. Uh, without the public's knowledge, nobody's outside of the parties will know until the parties say it's settled. And which is interesting. So when asked if the SEC eventually be forced to make the Hinman documents public, Morgan said, not necessarily if keeping Hinman documents confidential is a term of settlement, which can happen, uh, that is why having them gives Ripple real leverage in the settlement negotiations. We don't know on what basis Ripple received them, but does not allow them to be publicly uh, revi revealed. Under the local rules in which I practice in Australia, there are, is an implied undertaking not to publicly reveal documents disclosed by another party until put into evidence. Then it becomes public information. So again, the stumbling block for Ripple uh, for, for the SEC. So therefore, in Ripple's brief, all eyes will be on whether or not the fintech company cites Hinman documents as evidence. To the extent Ripple waives it, it could be a telltale sign of a settlement agreement. Holy whoa, this is going to be very interesting, guys. I'm telling you, if this comes, it's going to be crazy. Now, and again, link to the official company that's selling Ripple shares to uh, accredited investors says that obviously Bank America is interested in using ODL, according to Ripple CEO, which I disclosed in my video a couple of days ago. So uh, if that happens, guys, all the banks will use it because it's saving them money. We know one thing for sure is that banks do not like to lose money. <laughs> they don't really, when you think about it. And anyway, bargain hunters. Turn to Bitcoin after hitting a two-year low. Can Bitcoin re regain 17000 again? Excuse me. So although there is a prevailing uncertainty in the crypto market, Bitcoin bulls have propelled uh, the maiden digital asset from a two-year low to reign the $16,000 level. The rally emerged as a general market recorded minor improvements with the sector still appearing far from hitting its price bottom. Uh, after the Bitcoin rally, Kitco News analyst Jim Wyckoff right here on November 23rd stated that the recent short-term bullish trend is part of a Bitcoin bargain hunting with bears maintaining a technical advantage. I think a lot of uh, you know major institutions are still buying up Bitcoin for a fact because it's cheap right now, guys, and it will go to a million dollars eventually. And I, I mean, Kathy Woods is you know bullish as anything on it from ARK Invest, and she knows what she's talking about. She did... Uh, pick up tesla shares mind you as well before it just went parabolic and uh, i was one of them before that in that time my tesla shares went parabolic it's crazy uh ethereum clients teams test staking withdrawals on the devnet so ethereum developers launched a new devnet to test the unlocking of eth obviously staked right now with validators and the devnet prepare, prepares ethereum client teams to open up validator staking withdrawals next year which is going to see some interesting stuff happening with Ethereum as well. So keep an eye on that. And this gets even crazier, all right? So bankruptcy filing reveals China was FTX's largest client after island tax havens. And I was watching CNBC last night. I watch finance news literally every day. I love it. I'm addicted to it. And I think everyone that has access to a phone or an Apple TV or a smart TV, download Bloomberg News here in Australia because the CNBC one actually does not freaking work. Uh, unless you have Foxtel uh, cable TV, which is annoying. Uh, for some reason, CNBC has blocked us Australians from actually watching the stuff on our phones and whatnot. So I use Bloomberg as well. So for, there's a little tip for you. But uh, a bankrupt, I was watching this all last night unfold and the, the case, the bankruptcy filing case is actually ongoing at the moment. But a bankruptcy filing by the now collapsed FTX revealed that the platform's global customer distribution at the peak of its operations According to the documents, Cayman Island accounts for the highest share of customers at 22%, followed by the Virgin Islands at 11%. Notably, the two regions are mainly leveraged as tax havens. Of course they are. If you don't know what that is, go look it up. It's very interesting. So interestingly, despite the outlawing crypto transactions, mainland China represented the third largest share of FTX's customers at 8%. The same valued as Great Britain. Other notable sources of it of FTX customers included Singapore at six percent and the United States at two percent. Overall, the bankruptcy filings indicated that the exchange had customers in at least twenty-seven countries 
globally. That is insane. Look at all the countries, Taiwan, Singapore, you've got Portugal here, Netherlands, Malta, Korea, Israel, Hong Kong, Great Britain, France, uh, Chechnya, Cyprus, China, Cayman Islands, of course, that's the biggest one right there, of course, and the Virgin Islands, tax havens. Mm. Get the good accountant, guys, that's all I'm going to say, because uh, that's what uh, Sam McMurphy did. Anyway, CryptoMeter.io, I'm going to quickly look at this and we'll get to Twitter. Money's been going into BNB, don't know why, anyway. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Matic, Shiba Inu. We have Aave, XRP, which is nice. Near Protocol. Now, that's an interesting tweet I'm going to get to in a second. Now, the altcoin season index. Let's have a quick look at this. Wait for my phone to refresh. 43% Bitcoin, sort of moving towards Bitcoin. The top performers in the last 90 days are Trust Wallet Token, Litecoin, Doge, Quant, XRP, of course. And we have Matic. Hoibi token and BNB. I think BNB would be moving up a little bit today because I think a lot of people would be obviously, uh, you know, more positive towards CZ from Binance, which, I mean, he's a great dude. So uh, people trust him, could be putting their money into Binance or BNB. Anyway, this is my Twitter page, guys. Let's say uh, the Wall Street Bull Oz. Make sure you go follow me on there. When I hit 100,000 subscribers, I will do a live giveaway of this ring. No BS. Uh, it's one of my favorite pieces. And again, it's worth $2,500. So some lucky fan out there will get that ring. No BS. Now, this is interesting. Light the shines in the darkness. Thank you for this tweet. Uh, when XRP volume is settling current money payment systems eventually replaced by Ripple and others, it will be interesting to see if the payment flows are gradual or rapid uh, in the trans uh, transition. But we are talking billions of transactions will hundreds of trillions in value annually. This is what I'm talking about. Hundreds of trillions of dollars, guys. Fedwire, chips. Uh, we have electronic payment ACH right here. You can see right here, all of the payments, man. Look at this. Transactions, 204. $991 trillion. That is on Fedwire. We have chips to the clearinghouse, large banks, all right? $448 trillion. Just move down here. You've got Fed ACH right here. The Federal Reserve, obviously, thirty-seven trillion uh, transactions, two billion total value, eight point one trillion. Uh, again, electronics uh, payments network right here, and again, banks, approximately three hundred of them, seventy-two point six trillion, trillions of dollars, absolute trillions of dollars. Now, let me just zoom in here. You've got checks uh, Fed Now service, which we know as well. Uh, now that transfers NA, which is interesting, but eighteen billion. Just trillions of dollars will move. So thank you for that tweet. I appreciate it. Yes, I went to have a look at some toys today. Very interesting stuff. But uh, that is the Maserati MC20. A beautiful machine, by the way. Um, this thing is ridiculous. I sat in it and uh, the uh, tub of the car was just really low. Anyway, I had to be careful of my cowboy boots um, because I didn't want to damage the car. Anyway, there you go. So uh, let's move on, guys. Again, um, I'm working on cracking the matrix uh for finance as well and i'm starting to see and open up my eyes because i do this stuff every day and i am working on something very very interesting all right so we'll keep everyone updated about this now uh bitboy is having a full-blown stoush uh with kevin o'leary uh which again he's on a mission right here but uh scam a nickname alert from here on out kevin o'leary will be known as mr wonder fraud thanks in advance <laughs> anyway, it's full on, full on stuff. Now, some bullish updates about XDC. Comtech Gold Token CGO will be created on the Sinfin Protocol XDC blockchain network based on the deposit of physical gold bars located in DMCC approved vaults. Maybe XDC is going to be backed by gold. Very interesting stuff right here. And uh, this is an awesome interview with Crypto Eerie as well. I'm a big fan of your channel. Go follow her as well. Um, talking about XDC Foundation and decentralization. I'm not going to play it because I'm running out of time. But guys, tokenized gold powered by XDC. No brainer in my opinion. It's undervalued. And uh, now this is interesting. But wait, Coinbase didn't give XRP holder Songbird token distribution. Uncle Brian Armstrong, What the? what's going on here? It's going to be very interesting. And again, thank you to Matthew for this tweet. Um, again, I'm getting a lot of uh, scammers trying to trick my fans. Do not fall for this stuff right here. And I get hundreds of these. This is not me. Okay, this is fake. I will never ask you to message on WhatsApp. Please don't fall victim to this, sh this shit, guys. Please be careful. 
it's very risky and i've had some people that have actually been um lost money to this stuff right so it's not me i will never ask you to do that stuff now this is interesting and um near protocol ripple was investing in near protocol which is very very interesting as well i actually was not aware of this until one of my followers pointed this out so thank you for this tweet and pointing this out to me but uh you know it's nice to see ripple investing into near protocol so again building decentralized ap applications near protocol i'm very bullish on as well so i'm excited to announce that investment in near protocol alongside investors are complements right here electric capital pantera capital MetaStable, Amplify Partners, Scalar Capital, Coinbase Ventures are also investing in Near Protocol as well. So uh, there you go. It's actually on their official website. Bank of America, again, Riz, thank you for this tweet, is obviously waiting for the court case to settle with and obviously start using Ripple's ODL. And Kevin O'Leary is just being immature as well. Um, I am a fan of Kevin, but he's acting like a child right now. I'm both BitBoys as well. Stop the BS. Stop pointing out. Just, just let it, let it just you know happen. I mean, honestly, if something's bad's going to come out with the regulators and the, the courts, or whatever, let it happen. Don't uh, have a, a a bout like this on Twitter. It's not good. But anyway, hey, crypto bozo, I'm worried about you. I'm thinking of your thumbs are going to fall off. You tweet every thirty seconds. Only thing missing here is the facts. You just made S H I T up. Anyway. I don't know, man. There's just too much corruption going on here. And he's, obviously, he's, he did back Sam Bankman fried so it's not a good look. But uh, anyway, the biggest public traded hedge fund in the world, the Man Group, uh, to launch a Bitcoin and crypto hedge fund right here. And again, that's incredible. Johnny Deaton, I'm going to end up on this one as well. But let me be this. Uh, let me make this clear. Sam Bankman fried if, if he isn't arrested and charged with fraud, wire fraud, theft and possibly money laundering before in, uh, before and instead gets a spew out of his BS narrative. Our system of justice has been com compromised. Elizabeth Warren, you claim to be for the little guy. Where are you right now? Probably all getting, you know, cash and brown paper bags under the table. We know this. But um, Bank of Japan as well began coordinating an experiment regarding the issuing of central bank digital currencies with Japan's three mega banks. That is company, uh, coming right here. Now, this is just one thing I, I will mention as well. Functional NFTs have the potential to transform industries like real estate by solving challenges with efficiency and transparency of ownership. I like that. And that is a real use case with Ripple. Now, let's go to coin market cap right now. Top gainers in my portfolio are Bravain, Solana, Anchor Protocol, The Graph, Casper, Superfarm, DAG, Constellation, T Fuel, and VTHO. And again, where my money's going. Um, again, I dollar cost average into these coins every week. So uh, I put a small amount. I try to invest at least 10% of what my uh, income is for the week into my investments. All right. And it could be crypto, stocks, whatever, but we'll see what happens. All right. So Ethereum, of course, XRP, Cardano, we have AVAX, Link, XLM, Algorand, Quant, Hedera, IOTA, Casper, XDC, and Alliance Block. Bullish as anything, ladies and gentlemen. That is it for today's video. Thank you very much for sticking around. I will speak to you all in the comments. Join the Patreon page. Uh, you will not regret it, that's for sure. And uh, make sure you follow me on all social media platforms. Please check the freaking spelling. There's so many fake accounts. And these platforms like Instagram and Facebook, they don't want to verify me because whatever reason. I don't know. So uh, Twitter, thank you, Elon Musk, because again, I was able to verify myself. So I hope that happens on uh, Facebook and Instagram. And uh, there you go. That's it. Thanks very much, guys. We'll speak to you tomorrow and in the comments. Peace out. Bye.